Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And right out of the gate, I got to know, which one are you guys taking? I got an S54 custom wide body E30, total ripper of a race car. And we got a street car, obviously our K-Swap 911. Both cars totally rule. I love them. What do you guys think? Which one are you driving home? But uh, on another note, today, we're messing with the K-Swap 911. And our objective is to keep the engine bay cool. I'm going to show you how we did that. So like, subscribe, tell your friends, and uh, try to build this channel a little bit so I can keep doing more rad stuff. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoy the video. Figuring out how to cool this engine bay down. Now, I definitely want to run it with the trunk lid here. Um, you can actually see last night, I kind of made some templates. And I was considering cutting out a couple sections here and then running fans to pull push the exhaust out or the hot air out of the engine bay. Not really thrilled about that. I know I already cut this deck lid, which is kind of a stupid move on my end because this is actually, <laughs> I didn't realize it until last night. Where is it? Eh, hey, you can't see it. But this is actually a real GT3 wing and it's probably worth a few thousand dollars uh, for sure. And now this one is made for the non-GT3 cars because the GT3 car is the intake here. So it's a little bit wonky, but it is an OEM wing uh, made, made for aero kit uh, 996s from everything that I've understood. But I already cut it up. It is what it is. I love the look of this thing and it's awesome. And it needs a new paint job anyways. Whoever painted this did a really terrible job. But moving forward, uh, cooling. So we're cooling this engine bay and I have to figure out how to extract some air out of this just because the way we have it set up and the way I had my intercooler set up, I didn't want to, the exhaust down low because I don't want the hot air to interact with the intercooler, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm already kind of down this road and um, I'm just trying to figure out the best way to do things. So I did buy a couple uh, of these little fans. These are just seven inch fans. They flow like, I don't know, like 1200 CFM or something like that. And this one would actually fit really good right there. And there's actually a stud right there, so I just have to make another mount. Uh, it's a little close to the exhaust, but that's almost a good thing if the fan can survive it. And what I'd have to do is on the back side here, I would just have to drill, or uh, I just have to open this up here above the uh, frame rail. So I just have to cut a little section in here, which I'm not super thrilled about, but we're already cutting and chopping stuff anyways. But before I do that, I also had another idea. It's just a little axial fan, uh, brushless axial fan. And I was going to use this on my um, uh, water cooler for my welder, and I just haven't got around to it yet. So this is 120 volt, so obviously I can't use it in this car, but they make very similar ones that would work with, uh, that work with 12 volts. So I ordered a 7,000 RPM, essentially version of this that flows like 280, or I'm sorry, 230 CFM or something like that. So my thought was using this deck lid here, I could cut, um, I, I do one here, one here, one here, and one here. So I do four of these little axial fans, evenly spaced through the deck lid. And doing that, I would be able to either pull or exhaust air through this. Now this is designed to pull air through, but I'm almost thinking, I mean, that's only working at speed. I'm more concerned about just general engine temperature to begin with, and I'm not sure how much air this actually pulls in here. Um, so I was almost thinking, I mean, I can run them both ways and see which way is more effective. You know, all you have to do is flip these axials over. So what I could do is do one way where it's pulling the air in and pushing it down through the engine bay, or I could pull the air up because hot air rises up and out and try to shoot it out of here. Or I could cut vents in the bottom side here because this is the same chamber as this and 
do that. And that would almost work well too, because if you look here, this is where the air comes in and then it goes down into here. Well, if I had vents, which would essentially be, I don't know if you guys can see this all inside there, the vents would be straight down. This, instead of sucking air down and in to the engine bay, it actually just come through and out the back here, out the bottom here, almost creating a Venturi effect. So maybe that would be the move is to just open this whole back up. And then if, well, if I have uh, air getting pushed out here, once we're at speed, the air has somewhere to go and the, uh, the air coming through these vents here, coming down like this would actually assist in pulling the uh, air out the back and the air would just exit out here. I know it's a little long-winded, but that's kind of, I mean, that, I just came up with that there. That kind of makes sense to me um, because the stock, uh, there's a stock fan here and it pulled air down. And this was the stock air inlet for the uh, air box. So obviously it was designed to have air come this way, but there's no point in having air just dumping down in here because once it's in here, it's got nowhere to go. It just wants to go out the bottom. And uh, I think it'd be more effective to just try to get all this air and pull it out here. And then maybe this one here would just be an additional uh, fan to pull the air out the side. You know, I'm not thrilled about cutting a bunch of holes in there, but you know, maybe I could try the axial fans up top first and then see if that's something that's needed down the road. So that's what I'm kind of thinking for maybe fans. If you guys want to chime in, I'd be happy to uh, entertain some ideas, but you know, like I said, I think after looking at it, this idea is not great. And it would look kind of goofy. I don't really want to cut too much vents in there. But cutting vents in here, like I said, which is the same chamber up in here, might be a good idea. It would give the air somewhere to go. So here's my little template here. And all I did was I just took a piece of my daughter's uh, just a crayon for her, and you just did a do a rubbing of the uh, of the area that you want to get. So now we'll pull this off, and this will be our template to uh, transfer to. I'm probably just gonna make it out of cardboard real quick. Check this out, guys. So we got all six of them here, and I just have them temporarily wired up. Let's uh, let's get these fired off. Let's get these fired off and see what it sounds like and see how much air it feels like it's flowing. I think it's gonna be pretty nuts. suckers are ripping start blowing the boxes out of underneath and everything so that's pretty awesome i'm pretty stoked about that um the only thing is it is loud but i'm wondering once it's in the engine bay once the car is running if it's even going to be that obnoxious um so i will uh let me get these somehow fastened kind of just up in the general area or honestly i can just place them in here and just kind of close the trunk lid and fire them off just to see what it sounds like when they're in the car. So um, got to keep in mind, I almost got my uh, radiator fans running, which are very loud, the stage two fans. Um, so it might not be that big of a deal, but uh, they definitely pull some air, that's for sure. I mean, these things are ripping um, and they will definitely fit. Um, they will definitely fit up in here for sure. Well, I couldn't get the engine hatch all the way down because I haven't cut out that relief yet, but I just want to get a test to see if I can even feel, I mean, there's only those two openings for the stock air intake and the stock fan just on this side, but I want to see how much air actually pushes out of this. That's pretty good representation right there, you can see. And it's only getting air from just a couple, probably only three of the fans are even doing anything. But it's 
scoop of air all across that opening. Think it's gonna work. It's actually much quieter in the car when they're mounted and you know, up under there is way quieter than the just uh, the empty fan or the uh, bare fan just sitting on the counter. So I'm actually okay with it. I, I think it's good. And you know, the engine bay was still open actually to a crack. So I think it's louder than it actually will be too once it's, you know, all installed. And like I said, once the car's running and all that stuff, I don't think it's gonna be obnoxious at all. It's really no louder than the uh, front fans and the radiator. So I think I'm gonna run and gun with this idea. It seems excessive. I hope they can stand the heat, but uh, we'll see. And just so you guys know, each of these fans are 20 bucks a piece. And they're 120 millimeter, you know, fans. So they're very universal. They're used, all, all, that's pretty much all people use in the computer um, uh, computer world. You know, people are making, making custom mainframes and all this kind of craziness that is totally uh, beyond me. But um, yeah, we'll see, if, uh, we'll see if they can hang. And this will look really nice with this panel. You know, like I said, I'll make this panel and it'll all be flush and I think it'll, it'll look pretty good up in there too. Be pretty low profile once uh, once it's all said and done. Well, after doing some thinking, six is definitely, I think, going to be overkill. So what I'm gonna do is just have four of these uh, fans going here. Like I said, six, uh, there's only so much surface area, you know, gonna be here and here. And obviously here that the air can exit. And six is just, that's gonna be too much. So not a big deal. Um, I can uh, take one of those uh, fans and put it on my oil cooler here, which will definitely help. And then I almost had an idea. I'm not sure how well these are gonna hold up to weather, heat, and vibration. Um, these are not really made for like exterior, all weather type of situations. So this is gonna be a little bit experimental. They do make one similar size to this that are they're like 40 bucks a piece that are waterproof, quote unquote, but I'm not sure. You know, like I so said, we're just gonna play it by ear and just figure out how this is going. But um, anyways, you know, I can pop one of these guys, you know, shroud it and put it on here or something like that. Or put the other two, because I'll have two of the surplus now and just tie them into the same uh, switch and run these for my oil cooler. So, that's my thought. Um, you know, six is a little crazy. And uh, I just wanna show you what I'm making out of too. So right here I have 3 16 ABS. So it will be a nice, uh, I'm gonna keep the textured finish on the outside. So it just kinda be like this nice, you know, textured panel with the uh, four fans in it. So I'm gonna chop this up right now and uh, hopefully get these installed and see how it, uh, how it looks and how it works with the end product. Here. ABS all in place and now I'm just going to mark out just the edges here so I know how far to cut. I don't want to cut any more than I have to. Shoot in here. 
come right out here, pull a Venturi across and essentially suck this air right out and help these fans out that are going to be working their little axial butts off uh, trying to extract some heat out of this thing. I just want to show what I'm doing here. I'm actually, uh, I just drilled out the holes for mounting and now I'm just tapping them. So very simply, just have our drill here, put a good amount of pressure. And there we go. Now we have a nice M6 tapped hole. Now we certainly don't want to put a lot of torque on these because it's just a, you know, it's what, 3 16 of plastic here. But this will allow us to, um, this will allow us to through bolt these onto the backside here, obviously, and um, not have to use any nuts or anything like that. Well, here it is. I just gotta get the wiring cleaned up on the backside, but I mean, obviously this hardware is super ugly. But we're gonna uh, just get it wired up real quick and fire it off and see uh, see what it sounds like and all that stuff. But I think it looks pretty slick. It takes a while for these fans to spool up. So as long as these fans can stand the heat and the vibration, I think this is gonna be the move. Uh, I can't wait to get the final hardware on, the final connectors, and you know get this thing all buttoned up and relayed in, because it's gonna be pretty cool, I think. But uh, it looks good, I can say that. All right, so one last detail on this fan situation. Let me uh, open this trunk. Bam. There we go. We got them all installed. We got our new hardware all in, which makes it look really nice. We got our uh, cable going up into the fans and everything looks good. I also added the two extra fans I had. I just threw them on the oil cooler real quick and wired them into the fans. Now, something I did, um, I was honestly a little bit overwhelmed by the amount of air that these fans actually flow and how loud it was i mean these things rip at 7,000 rpm it's they're very loud and it was creating a little bit of vibration in the trunk uh, like harmonics i did order some weather stripping which i'm going to add so hopefully that will kind of deaden that a little bit but i did remember that I actually bought a Porsche GT3 power wheel for my daughter and was going to convert it to an 18 volt. Now I bought this power wheel for, geez, uh, a year ago. And I was like, yeah, that'd be sick. Turns out she can't even fit in this thing until she's like five years old. So with that being said, I bought all the conversion stuff to do an 18 volt swap. And one of those was a, show you here. DC motor voltage regulator. So now I have variable speed on all these motors. So what I'm gonna do is just fire this up. So I'm gonna turn on full rip right here so you guys hear it. So this is full speed. And it's moving a crazy amount of air, but it's also really loud. And I'm sure you can hear it, but it's creating like a harmonics, a humming situation. So we're just gonna dial it back and listen to it now. It's still moving a ton of air. I mean, it's, you know, obviously not as much as it was before, but now I can get it dialed in. So, I just thought that was a good idea. I had it laying around, and now I can, you know, obviously regulate uh, what these fans spin at. So, 
I think we'll start off with this, see how it goes. But it's really the harmonics that in the cabin that gets it. You know, if I could rip these full bore, that would be sweet. But um, yeah, I don't know. We just gotta figure out a way to figure out a way to deaden the uh, deaden the vibration in the cabin. So it might be something simple I can figure out. But hey, man, we'll we'll see how it goes. All right, check it out. I got all the fans ripping. Oil cooler, oil cooler's hot, but those fans are really pulling a lot of air out. And these, these are just amazing. I got so much heat getting pulled out of here. Been idling for about 15 20 minutes now with intermittent revving. Before I wasn't able to put my hand on here, it was so hot because the exhaust is obviously right here, and this would just heat up so much that it was just so hot. But uh, yeah, these fans are just blowing air like crazy. Obviously, this side's a little hotter than this side. Let's check this out, too. I'm running my AC now, we got 70 degrees coming out of the uh the system here which i'm pretty happy with got my trusty meat thermometer i'm gonna stick this in the engine bay with the fans running now see what the temperature is in the engine bay all right it's been in there for about five minutes with the fans running All right, that's gonna do it. That's how we uh, kept this engine bay cool. I appreciate y'all uh, tuning in. And on the next one, we're gonna start messing with some uh, body work and some aero on the 911 here. So I'm gonna uh, focus on getting the rear bumper trimmed up and start thinking about some diffuser type situation out the rear so we can channel some air right through that intercooler. So the last time we were out, I saw 114 degree air intake temperatures which is with the engine bay fans ripping and uh, just cruising around town on a 95 degree day, which actually is really good if you think about it. Um, so I'm very happy with where it's at, but I'm really excited to see once we start channeling some air up and under uh, and through that intercooler to see how much more we can cool it down uh, on uh, in general, especially on hot days like today. It'll be really interested to see if we can just keep pulling those temperatures down just by channeling some air. So. That's what we're going to do in the next one. We're going to uh, start focusing on some aero. And I'm just going to uh, stare at my cars for the rest of the day. Maybe give them both a bath and be nice to them for once. So catch you on the next one, guys. Thanks for watching.